Good Tuesday morning, everybody, and welcome once again to Arnie's Fantasy World of Sports. And you know, I was just looking at past shows. Do you know this is our 157th episode together? You know, it's almost like five more episodes and we will have played a full Major League season. How about that? And it just seemed like we started yesterday. And here we are, almost a full MLB slate into fantasy podcasting. Wow! So thank you, everybody, for being here this morning. I hope everyone's having a great day. Thank you, Lenny from Long Island, starting off our day on a wonderful note. And so with that, let's talk a little fantasy baseball, shall we? And let's start with my beloved Yankees, where the report out of Tampa, George M. Steinbrenner Field, is that New York Yankees starting pitcher James Big Maple Paxton. Everybody remember him? I saw a picture the other day of James Paxton with a mustache, and it looked like, I don't know, strange. How's that? Uh, anyway, let's get to what's going on baseball-wise. Could start throwing again as soon as tomorrow, Wednesday, as long as Big Maple doesn't experience any setbacks between now and tomorrow. Now, remember, back a little while ago, beginning of February... If you remember that, Paxton underwent surgery to remove a cyst in his back, and the most optimistic timeline has Paxton set to return around the beginning of May. So he may miss the month of April. Remember, he's had no spring training at all. Now, you know, last year he had an ERA of around 380, and he's got a near 30% strikeout rate planned for him this year so let's monitor the news out of tampa and particularly how the i'm going to call it um bullpen session or throwing session that he has tomorrow goes because again we talked about this yesterday that as you're drafting players you want to know these injury reports you know yesterday we talked about verlander and now with Verlander having the lat issue, it appears, you know, he's going to be out the first of the year. Boy, I could take a real hit to this Houston rotation. And could it be really interesting if Forrest Whitley could all of a sudden turn it around and be in that rotation at the start of the year? I know that's a long shot, right? But you've got Urquidy, you've got Grinky, you've got McCullers. And gosh knows how long he might last. And from there on, you I mean, there's a lot of question marks in Houston. And I'm not, I'm just talking baseball players who are healthy. They've already lost Cole to free agency. And last year, Cole and Verlander combined for over, I mean, over 600 strikeouts. And you start the year with neither one of them. Paxton for the Yankees. I mean, what I'm getting at is, the mighty seem to be a little bit down and dinged, and now is an opportunity for teams like Oakland, teams like Tampa, to really make a splash, if you will, early in the year. I think it could happen. I mean, now, if Paxton comes back and he's, you know, pitching by the end of April, not a big uh, you know, not a lot of time missed, of course, but still, you're you're without Severino all year. Now you've got Paxton. You, we don't even talk about the offense. So, we'll keep the Yankees situation with Paxton as we get into tomorrow. And while we're talking about pitching, let's just stay on that track, okay? So let's go across town, Philadelphia camp in Clearwater, Florida where starting pitcher and Philly ace Aaron Nola, he was scratched from his grapefruit start yesterday because of the flu. 
Now, different than Big Maple, James Paxton in the back, no surgery, anything. So this illness should be short-term and really shouldn't affect Nola long-term as he's still on track to start for the Phillies on opening day. And that'll be his, oh, by the way, his third straight opening day start for the fight in Phils. I think last year was a disappointment to Nola with a 387 ERA considering it was a run and a half to the point higher than it was in 2018 when his ERA was 2.37. But he still put up great strikeout numbers last year, 10.2K per nine over 200 innings. So do you look for Nola to bounce back in 2020 and be more like the 237 ERA, or is he going to be like the 387 ERA from a year ago? Now, again, I've heard it over and over and over on different publications that the baseball this year is the 2018 version, not the 2019 version. I... The 2018 version did not fly out of ballparks with helium like <laughs> the last year's baseball. So certainly if the ball isn't flying out of parks as much, it's going to help Aaron Nola, particularly in a ballpark like Philadelphia, where it's a hitter's park on a bad day, right? So keep your eye on Nola. Scratch from his start due to the flu. And so... There you go. Now, we know about Verlander, and and you listened to me yesterday because I really questioned that he was going to be able to start his next start. I was right. And so now with this mild lat strain, according to general manager James Click, the question is, how long will he be out? Now, Click said, quoting, we don't know, end of quote, whether Verlander will be ready for opening day. But I go back, and I know it's a different player altogether, okay? Different age, different experience, different pedigree. I got it. But remember Jesus Lazardo last year for Oakland also had a lat injury, and he wound up missing about two months. Now, I don't know how long Justin Verlander is going to be out of action for the Houston Astros. It doesn't seem to be with a mild lat strain that this is a very serious injury, but lat strains, as I just pointed out with Luzerto, they can hang around for a while, kind of like a bad cold. Now, you know Verlander, reigning Cy Young, one of the best pitchers in the game, but it's a high-risk, high-reward kind of draft pick, don't you think? Now, not expected to be ready for opening day. I think he could be out a couple of months. Okay, so if he comes back in a couple of months, that puts him on schedule to come back mid-May. Mid-May. And you've probably got, what, oh, 30, 40 games under your belt. So a fourth of the season is gone. And that's a lot of time for a starting pitcher. In fantasy. So here we go. The question is what does this injury do to Verlander's draft slot in your upcoming drafts? So let's talk about this for a moment because you want to get value. And this is a year where I really think you could see starting pitchers go in the first round that normally may not have gone as high in the draft as they will this year. So if Verlander, let's, let's look at where does he come off the board if he's healthy. Okay, if he's healthy, I think he comes after Garrett Cole. I think he comes after Jake DeGrom. But beyond that, I think he's right there with Scherzer. I think he's maybe third, fourth, possibly the lowest fifth pick pitcher in drafts, he's going to get the strikeouts, he's going to get the innings, he's going to get the wins. Now that's before injury. Now he's in the injury. So now where do you put him? I think he comes after Walker Bueller. 
I think he comes after Jack Flaherty. Clevenger, we're going to talk about him in a minute, maybe after Clevenger. How far does the mighty fall? Does he go from a first or second round? Probably a second round if not injured. Is, how, is he a fourth round? Is he a fifth round? You're going to miss potentially a fourth of the season, maybe a fifth of the season. That's a lot. I want to watch report. The great thing is I don't like having early fantasy baseball drafts. I think it's asinine. I think you wait till the weekend before the season starts to have your fantasy baseball drafts. I don't care what you're doing. Now, I get why they do it on satellite radio. They're selling. Okay, they're selling. They want listeners. They've got to create excitement. I understand that. But I'm not on satellite radio. I'm doing a podcast. I want to wait till the last moment. The Sunday before, the Monday before the season opens to conduct my drafts because you're going to have injuries like Verlander come up, right? So, reports out of Houston yet to come are important. Let's keep our eye on Verlander. Talking about pitchers still, the Arizona Diamondbacks will be looking closely, scrutinizing, if you will, starting pitcher Luke Weaver's innings total all season long. Last year, now that was according to general manager Mike Hazen. Last year, Weaver, 64 and a third in 2019. He's never, never had more than 140 innings in any one season. And so look for pitch counts early and often. Look for the D-backs to occasionally use a six-starter. Push Weaver starts back a little bit. And whether the team shuts him down early in the season is probably dependent on whether or not the Diamondbacks are in the playoff race. 26-year-old, fantasy upside this year, in the 12 games he started last season, he had a 2.94 ERA and a K per nine over nine. Small sample size, however, folks, because all of that was in only 12 starts for the season. We're going to keep talking pitching. That's what we're going to do. We're going to talk pitchers, and after I finish my pitcher talk, Then we're going to talk hitters, okay? So it's pitching, pitching, pitching for a little while. And let's talk about one of those aces that I named just a few moments ago. Let's go to Cleveland. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Just spent some time in Nashville. I went to Studio B. If you've ever been to Nashville and you've never been to Studio B, then you've never really been to Nashville because Studio B, what is that? Well, it's from 1957 to sometime in the 70s, and that's where all of the stars went to record, including the king of rock and roll, Elvis Presley. And so that's why I bring up Cleveland being the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I'd link it all back to Nashville, linking it all to Elvis. Wow, he's a rock star. Well, so is Mike Clevenger. He is a rock star. Not the rock star like Elvis, but a rock star. Good news out of Cleveland. You know, he injured his knee. Meniscus tear. Everybody's like, oh my gosh, I'm not going to draft Clevenger. Well, you might change your mind on that. Because he's set to throw his first bullpen session testing out that partially torn meniscus that he tore on Valentine's Day. He's bumped up his rehab over the last week. So we'll see today how the bullpen went yesterday. It's always the day after. Bullpen was yesterday on Monday. We'll get reports out today on any ill effects or side effects Probably will miss a start or two. 